Take a look at this brand new scientific paper. Brand new scientific paper. Atto second quantum uncertainty dynamics and ultra fast squeeze light for quantum communication. Oh boy. That is a lot of buzzwords that we like to talk about right there. Let me break this down for you. Atto second lasers, as Salvatore Pais mentioned, can produce energy densities that can manipulate space time. Why? Because it's all about density. How do you increase your density? One way you can increase energy density is reducing time. The shorter your time interval, the higher your energy density. So the faster your, your laser beams, which is what an attosecond laser is, extremely fast, you've now increased your energy density. And then squeezed light. Ooh, squeezed light, chat. And just for no reason, I'm just going to say, yes, ER equals EPR. We should be saying that probably every day. ER equals EPR. But squeeze states of light. Remember, what was it that Eric W. Davis was saying, what are the ways to produce negative energy? What are the ways to produce negative energy, chat? Oh, squeezed states of light. Squeeze states of light where you separate the positive and negative energy aspects of the light beam can produce negative energy, which is exactly what we need for a warp drive or a wormhole. So when I read this, and then what's the last word in this sentence? For quantum communication. Oh, yes. Quantum communication. So when we're talking about quantum communication, what are we talking about? We're talking about using EPR, Einstein, Poldowski, Rosen, quantum entanglement to literally produce a, a communication system. Now, if you haven't been paying attention or watching my live streams very much, let me reiterate, we can use quantum entanglement to communicate faster than light, 100%. Anybody that doubts that, well, get your apology forms ready. Get those apology forms ready. Ashton Forbes was right. I learned it from John Kramer from University of Washington, Professor Emeritus at Physics. He's an experimental nuclear physicist. And the way that it works is that we can set up a switch. The problem is people say, oh, you can't do faster than light communication or instantaneous transmission of communication. But we know that it's possible. Quantum teleportation has been proven for many years, proven. But people say, well, the issue is you have your two entangled systems, right? So if I impact one on my right, then it changes the one on the left. It may be if I move this one up, then this one goes down, you know, something like this. So then people say, well, the problem is the moment you try to measure, the moment you try to measure it, the entanglement breaks. That's true. That's true. So this is a problem. How do we create a communication system when the moment I try to measure it, it breaks down? How do we do that? The answer is in, of course, the DIRDs, the Defense Intelligence Reference Documents. The DIRDs have every answer you could possibly want in them. They have every answer. Read the non-locality DIRD by John Kramer, and he just has the answer right in that paper. The DIRD has the answer right in that paper. You build a switch. We don't measure. How do you communicate between the two? Well, what you do is on one side, of your communication protocol, you build a switch. You build a switch in one side of your communication protocol. And then what you do is you, you force the measurement to change the outcome. And then what you say is, okay, now I've got a situation where either my wave function breaks down because there's a measurement that's performed or the wave function doesn't break down. So now what you've done is you've created a one and a zero. Simple as that, a one and a zero. So now if you can control this switch and make it so that you can have the wave function break down and collapse at will, now you've created binary code. Now you can send Morse code. Now you can send computer code. Now you've created a communication, a, a practical method of communication. And what this allows for, what is the practical capability of this, is that what you can do now I like to explain, like, how, what would this, what does this look like? Because are we then 
communicating back in time? No. What we would be able to do is we can control the Mars rover from Earth in real time. In real time. So what that would mean is, and this is crazy because it takes light like eight minutes or something, or three minutes, I don't know the exact time, to get from Earth to Mars. So there should be a three-minute delay, even at the speed of light. But with a quantum communication system, you can control the Mars rover. You can have a, a camera on the Mars rover, and you can be controlling it, and it'll move in real time. So you can bypass the whole delay. So what this does is it removes lag. Lag goes away entirely. So imagine, and there will be a quantum internet. By the way, it will be called the Ethernet. We've already dubbed it. Anybody that tries to call it anything else, they're wrong. They're just objectively wrong. The Ethernet is what it's called, just like an Ethernet cable, but with an A in front of it. So it's going to be called, the quantum internet is going to be called the Ethernet. We've dubbed it. We're the first. It's like we're Christopher Columbus of the Ethernet. We, we've called it the Ethernet. There you go. There will be no lag whatsoever. You can play uh, Call of Duty against or StarCraft against the Korean kids or whatever with no lag whatsoever. And then you can lose even faster, even, even better, because the Koreans never lose at StarCraft. They're just simply the best. It's like in their DNA or something. I don't know. Don't ask me. It's science. Okay. I just want to read the abstract. I'm going to take a look at this over the weekend, and I may do like a video on it or a follow up on this. Advancements in quantum object optics and squeezed light generation have revolutionized various fields of quantum science over the past three decades, with notable applications such as gravitational wave detection. Here we extend the use of light, squeeze light to the realm of ultra fast quantum science. We demonstrate the generation of the shortest ultra fast synthesized quantum light pulses spanning 0.33 to 0.73 petahertz, I think, by a degenerate four wave mixing linear nonlinear process. No way, chat. No way. That is exactly what the orbs are doing in the MH370 videos. It's four-wave degenerate mixing. Four-wave degenerate mixing. What happens in four-wave degenerate mixing is you have your pump waves. Your pump waves enter a nonlinear medium, and then you can shoot a beam into that nonlinear medium. And no matter what angle you shoot it at, the, a beam will come out the opposite way automatically. doesn't even matter what angle you shoot it at automatically. That's what four wave mixing is. I haven't, we haven't talked about four wave mixing in a while. So, I mean, I don't, this is like basically every buzzword we've ever mentioned rolled up into one scientific paper right here. I'm going to have to go deep dive into this later. Experimental uh, metrology. I don't know what that means. Results confirm that these pulses exhibit amplitude squeezing, which is consistent with theoretical predictions. So I think what they're saying here is the amplitude squeezing will allow us to get negative energy. Moreover, we observe the, the temporal dynamics of amplitude uncertainty of the squeezed light, demonstrating that quantum uncertainty of light is controllable and tunable in real time. Holy smokes. Holy smokes. Additionally, we demonstrate control over the quantum state of light by switching between amplitude and phase squeezing. Yeah, I, this, is, they, this is the switch, I think. I think they're talking about the switch right here. I think they're talking about this is how they built the switch to do the communication. We demonstrate control over the quantum state of light by switching between amplitude and phase squeezing. Our ability to generate and manifest ultra-fast squeeze synthesized light waveforms with at a second resolution unlocks exciting possibilities for quantum technologies, including petahertz scale, uh, secure quantum communications, quantum computing, ultra-fast spectrometry, as a result, or as an example, we introduced an attosecond quantum encryption protocol leveraging squeeze synthesized light for secure digital communications at unprecedented speeds. This work paves the way for exploring quantum uncertainty dynamics and establishes the foundation for the emerging ultra fast and attosecond quantum science fields. Holy crap. Chat, we find the best science. Whoever sent me that, gold star for the day for you, sir, Go or ma'am. Gold star for the day for you. That is my that is my kind of scientific paper. 